Hi folks, Steve here of Rimstar Org. Uh, lately I've noticed some misconceptions about magnets and electrostatics. Uh, user 101 on Basic had produced a video trying to clear it up, but then I noticed some other discussion elsewhere with the same misconceptions. So I thought I'd produce a video of my own trying to clear it up and explain a few things along the way. Enjoy! Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is charge up this electroscope. Uh, just watch the leaves at the bottom here. I'm going to do it by induction. If you're not familiar with charging by induction, uh, check out my video all about it. So watch what happens to the uh, foil leaves there as I bring the magnet close. You can see that there's an attraction. Both of them are being attracted to the leg of the uh, magnet. If I use the other leg, I get the same sort of attraction. So it doesn't seem to have to do anything with the poles, and in fact it has nothing to do with the fact that it's a magnet at all. Here's a piece of wood. And I get the same sort of attraction. Here's a pair of pliers with an insulated handle. And same sort of effect. So clearly it had nothing to do with the fact that that was a magnet, and that was the misconception that, that the magnetic field was actually taking place, but it's not. Here's an explanation of what's going on. Due to the way I charge this electroscope, both leaves have a positive charge, more positive protons than negative electrons. Before the magnet is brought close to the leaves, the entire magnet has a neutral charge. Everywhere there's a positive proton, there's a corresponding negative electron to balance it out. This magnet is made of an electrically conductive material, steel, so the electrons are free to move around. When the magnet gets close enough, the positively charged leaves attract electrons on the magnet. That causes the end of the magnet farthest from the leaves to be left positively charged, and the end nearest the leaves to be negatively charged. Since unlike charges attract, the positively charged leaves are attracted to the negatively charged end of the magnet, and that's how it works. At no point did the magnetic field of the magnet play a part. Note that these leaves are aluminum, so they don't normally interact with the magnet even when they're not charged. But what about the wood? Wood is an insulator, so electrons shouldn't move around easily. And they don't. But the molecules that make up the wood consist of atoms with both positive protons and negative electrons. The electrons are free to move around within the atoms. So the positive charge on the leaves attract the electrons to the side of the atoms closest to the leaves. They don't go very far, but we do end up with a negative charge on the end nearest the leaves. And since unlike charges attract, the positively charged leaves are attracted to the negatively charged end of the wood. Now watch what happens to the leaves of the uh, electroscope when I bring objects close to the terminal of the electroscope. So here's the magnet. Notice in this case the leaves don't move in one direction. Instead they both move closer together. And here's an explanation of why. Due to the way this electroscope was charged, the entire electroscope has a positive charge. There are more positive protons than negative electrons. When the magnet is brought close to the terminal, the terminal's positive charge attracts negative electrons to the end of the magnet closest to the terminal. Since like charges repel each other, that causes some of the electrons on the terminal to be repelled towards the leaves. Those electrons repel other electrons along the way, and the end result is that electrons move further down to the leaves. Those electrons on the leaves cause the leaves to be less positively charged. And since both leaves are less positively charged, they don't repel each other as much. They come together a little. And by now you can guess what happened with the wood. The electrons in the atoms were attracted to the terminal, causing one end of the wood to have a negative charge. And just like with the magnet, that negative charge repelled negative electrons down to the leaves, causing the leaves to become less positively charged and not repel each other as much. Note that this whole demonstration was done with the electroscope positively charged. The leaves would have behaved the exact same way if it was negatively charged instead. The only difference would have been in the direction the electrons would have moved. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. Well, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my YouTube channel, Rimstar Org, for more science and tech videos. That includes one on how to make your own electroscope, also the one I mentioned on how inductive charging works, and one all about a magnet's magnetic field. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon!